Okay, I think we're live. Hello. Hi. Um, we're live, though I'm not gonna going to see myself for another 15 seconds or so. Um, I'm Bella Christova. I'm a violinist, and this is our home in Philadelphia. My husband David is here. He's my um, backstage executive producer, and <laughs> he's over there. He's gonna be helping me with all the technical things. Oh, he's giving me a thumbs up. Good. Um, I'm so nervous. My heart is beating about as fast as it does when I take off an airplane. I get very nervous on takeoff. <laughs> um, so, good. We are live. I'm very happy to be playing for you today. I have a program of unaccompanied violin music, and then there's a special surprise at the end. Um, I'm going to start with a piece by Ellen Tafs Willick. A piece named Fantasy for solo violin. I played it last year for the first time and it's a piece that uses the violin really um, to its fullest. Shows a lot of different things that you can do and I love the piece so I wanted to share it with you today and um, a very personal thing is that it's dedicated to one of my dear teachers, Jamie Laredo. It was written uh, for the International Violin Competition of Indianapolis and yeah so, good, I'm going to play. I also have an iPad to check comments in between, so, great. First, I have to calm down. Okay, I'm calm.
Someone is asking the name of the piece, says David. Um, that was Fantasy by Ellen Tofts Willick. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Am I still in the shop? You're, um, yes. Still in the shop? Yes. I don't, it's not up, look, it's not updating for me. Oh, well I have it. Are there, um, any other questions? Um, not yet. Okay. But I'll, I'll prompt people for questions. I don't know why I'm not seeing it. I'm... Maybe because you're, I don't know why, but maybe because you're an admin. But I'll, um, hi everyone. Hi. Um, <laughs> Sorry. Um, really, this is the first time I'm doing, oh, there I am. Oh yeah, I look confused. First time I'm doing a Facebook Live where I'm in charge of pushing all the right buttons at the right time. So, forgive me. Oh, okay, good. I have the comments. Good. Oops, um, no, I don't want to share. Oh. <laughs> Maya wants to know where your shirt comes from. Maya wants to know, hi Maya, um, my shirt is from a store called Aritzia, it's a Canadian store, because, well, I was going to say everything in Canada is better, is that true? Well, I don't know. Well, it's a great store, we love but there's Canada. a number of them in New York. Um, we love Canada. Okay. Okay, moving on. Um, so, we have been home now for maybe six or seven weeks without any travel. Mm, David and I came home from our last performance before the quarantine was in Hawaii and we came home March 2nd and actually I had a little time off then so I had planned to take a small break um, during which I played Horizon Zero Dawn. Thanks Cindy. It's a great game. <laughs> um, but after that and once it became clear that we were going to be home for a while, I sort of had to find things to practice. And yes, I have things um, to learn for performances coming up, but it looks like I'm going to have a lot of time. So I put on my stand the Bartok Solo Sonata. <clears throat> I played the Bartok Solo Sonata over 10 years ago on a, on a concert tour. So I played it a lot, but I haven't played it since then. And over the years, I've always thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice to practice that again? So that's the first thing that I put on my stand once quarantine started. So I've been practicing the Bartok Solo Sonata. It's an incredibly difficult work. Um, today I'm going to play for you the slow movement, uh, the third movement called Melodia. It's a very lyrical melody. It's introspective. It's sort of reflective of the time, this time that we're all in. We're, we're um, looking inward and sort of reflecting on what's going on in the world, but um, in addition to that, I also hear some optimism and hope in that music, and I hope you hear that too. This is the uh, slow movement of Bartok Sol Sonata.
That was the slow movement of Bartok's solo sonata. How's it going, everybody? Let's see. Diane wants to know if there are many pieces like this Willick that show off the violin the best. That's a great question. Um, there's another great piece for solo violin, which was written for me by the incredible Joan Tower. And she also uses just the entire range of the instrument, and then some. Um, but yeah, the, uh, well, uh, the box sonatas and partitas, for example, the, they're written um, about 300 years ago, and they're <clears throat> they really use the violin to its to, well to its fullest potential at the time. I suppose the fingerboard was shorter. Um, yes, there are many many pieces like that. <laughs> I saw something about cats, so I was already distracted before I started answering. Someone, I took care of the cats. Oh. Someone um, also wanted to know about your violin, and I said what it was and when it was from, but if you want to say anything. Oh, you're commenting. More about it. Oh, yeah. Wow. So, um, the cats are upstairs because there are too many wires right now, and um, they're not allowed because they're very bad. They like to play with everything they're not supposed to. Um, Something that's very special about this violin is that, well, many things, but one is that it was made 30 years before Bach was even born. It's a Niccolò Amati violin, um, very generous loan to me, and it was made in the year 1655. And I'm going to be playing some Bach later, but are there any more questions for now? Uh, yes, someone just asked, what is one of the most influential pieces of advice you ever got from a teacher? I don't know if you guys heard that question. It was, what's the most influential piece of advice I ever got from a teacher? And that is to just be myself. Uh, but, you know, musically and really in every artistic way. It's just to trust my instincts and find my own voice. I feel that I'm dawdling because we're going to run out of time and I still have a lot of music to play. Um, the next piece is a traditional Bulgarian dance. I was born in Bulgaria. Um, I spent the first 13 years of my life there. So this is traditional dance, it's called Rachinitsa by Petr Christosko.
Schnitzel by Peter Christoskov. Yay! Hi, Julia! I might move on to the Bach and then answer some more questions then, because, as I said, there's a special surprise at the end. So while we're getting set up for that... Jeffrey said oh. that we can also go over, and it's totally cool. Oh, okay, good. So maybe we'll take a question now. Someone Thanks, asked, Jeffrey. Someone asked if you did Suzuki. Someone also asked if that's an SAS chin rest. Yes, it is. It's an SAS chin rest, and I switched to it this February. Um, after, well, actually, I had had it, but the ribs on this violin are thinner than most, I guess, so I had to have some cork added before it would actually clamp on to see if it would work for my neck, and I really like it. I also have little red pads on the bottom. What was the other question? Did you do Suzuki? I did not do Suzuki. I started playing the violin when I was six in Bulgaria. I don't know if they had Suzuki there then, but my teacher was trained in the Russian school. So I started by reading music straight away and uh, doing solfege from the time I was six. And yeah, stuff of nightmares. <laughs> I think I'll play some Bach now. <laughs> I won't solfege it though. I'm going to play the from the G minor sonata, the Siciliana and Presto. Sorry, I got distracted. Hi, Maria. Thank you. I'm going to actually close this because it's too easy to get distracted.
and presto from the G minor sonata. Someone's asking about your bow. Somebody's asking about the bow. This is a beautiful Sartori bow that I've had for a few years. It's on the stronger and heavier side, and I love it. I'm going to invite my husband to join me now. Oh, is so, that already? Yeah, it's 4.30 already. Oh, um, no. So David is a composer, one of my favorite composers, living or dead. And <laughs> <laughs> actually, you mean that I'm living or dead? or One of oh. my favorite living or oh, dead composers. Okay. My dad was also a composer. Uh, my dad's name was Yuri Chichkov. Uh, he was a Russian composer, and I never knew him because he died when I was four, and I didn't know him before that. But I've gotten to know his music. David is changing the microphone. Okay. I'm fussing with it. He's fussing with it. I um I know his music, so I grew up listening to my dad's songs. He wrote a lot of songs for choir and either orchestra or piano. It's not until this quarantine that we had the idea to arrange some of these songs for violin and guitar. Guitar is one of the instruments that David plays. So um, we have the floor spiked here. I'm gonna oh, I stage see. Hand. Um, so we're going to share with you something that's very personal today. Um, it's a song that my dad wrote, Yuri Chichkov, and the song is called, It's All Called Nature. I think that's the translation. What is it in Russian? Suet nazivayate priroda. And I'm not sure that that's the right way to say it. But, <laughs> that's... I'd love to know that we're both in the shot, though. I think we are. Well, even if we're not, I don't think that we'll object. Should we tune? Sure. Nature by Yuri Chichkov. Six yeah, minutes sweeties. for um, the past 15 days. No, not quite. But we've rehearsed a lot. We've rehearsed a lot. This was really fun. This is great. Yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to check the comments again, see if there are any last questions to answer. Oops, no. Should I stay here? Well, you could help me find a question. I'll go look at the comments on the iPad. I can't see more than four comments at a time. Okay, let me look. Oh, I think friend of mine had the same issue. If only they 
taught us Facebook, how to do Facebook Live at school. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's good, everyone. Is the one by my father is gorgeous. I agree. He wrote beautiful music. And actually, we're thinking of arranging a few of the songs and making videos of them. And sharing them with the world. Great. Great. Monica. Hi, Monica. Monica. Happy that. Earth Day. Yes, it's Earth Day. Nick Deutschheim signed on. Hi, Nick. Let's, yeah. let's take care of our planet on Earth Day. And let's all stay safe and healthy. And let's get through this together. Thanks for joining us, everybody. Bye.